Hi there, I'm Tom Casper, the editor of American Woodworker. Welcome to my shop. Today I want to show you one of my favorite accessories for a bandsaw. It's a circle cutting jig. And what it does is allow you to cut from a square or octagonal blank a perfect circle. Something with perfectly smooth edges, not the jiggy jaggy kind of edge that you get when you try to saw something freehand. Now, I'll bet you've seen something like this before. I mean, this, the whole idea of a circle cutting jig goes, well, way back to the Paleozoic era, probably. But it's real simple how it works. And what I'm going to do is to kind of lead you through the principles of what it does, what I've added to the classic model to make it a little more accurate. And then after that, I'm going to show you all the steps in actually making one. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the jig and see how it works. As I said, it's extremely simple. It's a piece of plywood that slides in and out on your bandsaw table because it has a runner glued on the bottom of it that fits the slot in the table. It also has some stops here and here that stops the travel of the table. When I push it forward like this at the same spot every time. And the way it cuts a circle is real simple. There is a pin, a pivot pin, on the table that you put your blank on, square, turning it into a circle. Let me just put a circle on here. And on my particular table, this pin is easily adjustable in its distance from the blade because, of course, that determines the diameter of the circle. But anyway, this uh, is a loose piece that slides in a dado slot that goes all the way across this piece of plywood. Opposite this is a piece of hardboard. And this piece acts as a zero clearance throat plate. If this weren't here, for instance, and I were just to have this strip in here like this, positioned so, push in here to the cutting position. You can see there's nothing to right underneath the workpiece to prevent tear out. But you put this piece of hardboard in there and of course you can keep reusing this at different lengths every time. Um, now we have support and uh, tear out prevention. But anyway, back to this pivot pin. Here's your blank. You put the square on here. It just fits. Well, actually, you can do it before you even install it in the table. Stick it right in there, like so. And the way this works, and I'll show you how it cuts in just a minute here. You slide this thing forward until it hit the stops. And then you spin this, just like so. So, of course, it's going to be clamped here. <laughs> you know why it's sliding? I guess you can make an oval that way if you're really clever about it. But anyway, you just rotate this piece merrily and along. Uh, you get is a perfect circle. So uh, in just a minute here, I'm going to put a blank on here. We're going to cut it and watch the whole thing, how it works, OK? OK, let's watch this uh, jig in action. And then you'll really get a good idea of what's going on. First thing we're going to do is to set the radius of the circle. Here's my strip with the pivot pin in it. And oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, this is a, what's called a metal dowel. You can buy these things in hardware stores of very precisely made of, a, and again, a precise dimension. But one could just as easily use a nail stuck in here if you want a minimal hole in your workpiece or a, a larger uh, metal dowel as well. We want to make a circle using this blank that has a three inch radius. So what I'm going to do is to measure the distance from the center of the dowel to the blade. Three inches. I can just more or less for now is good enough. There we go. Clamp this thing down. OK, so now the pivot pin can't move. Pull the table back, put the blank onto the pin, if we can find the hole, bingo, there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to turn on the saw 
And the deal, here's how it works. You push the table straight into the blade. And once you hit the stops, the blade will be directly opposite this pivot pin. And at that point, I can start turning the circle. It's that simple. Okay, here we go. Okay, when you're all done, just withdraw the piece straight back, just the way you cut it. Off comes the waist, and off comes perfectly around circle. It's that simple. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is the diameter, or rather the width of the blade is important. As you know from bandsawing, if you use too wide a blade, you can't really negotiate a curve very well. So the size of the blade um, is determined by the radius of the circle. And here I've used a quarter inch blade. That's probably about the right choice for almost all circles that would be up to this size. So uh, let's uh, take a look at how you make one of these things. Okay, let's start making one of these bandsaw circle cutting jigs place we're going to start is making the runner. This piece right here underneath the piece of plywood that will fit nice and tight into the slot on the bandsaw table. Um, I've had to make a whole lot of these runners over the years and uh, there's lots of ways to do it, but I've come kind of down to a really simple way and that is to use quarter inch hardboard, which is pretty resistant to wear and doesn't have uh, any propensity to get wider or narrower or something like that with the seasons as solid wood was. So it stays nice and stable. Once it's a tight fit, it stays a tight fit. And it's already the right thickness. So it's not like you have to prepare solid wood or anything like that for it. The only trick is, is to making a cut that is absolutely straight and uh, with as smooth a sides as possible. And here's two tricks I've found that helps me to do that. One, I'm going to use a trim cutoff blade, an 80 tooth blade, not a general purpose blade or a rip blade or anything like that. This blade gives me the smoothest edges that uh, I can get with any kind of blade. And secondly, I found that you really need to hold down the full length of the piece with a push stick while you're cutting. If you just use a short push stick, the front end of this thing can vibrate while it's cut, making a rough edge and um, you won't get perfectly smooth parallel sides. So this is a special push stick I've made just for this um, kind of occasion, but you know, of course turning one of these things out is no big deal. It has a little notch in the back of it that isn't any deeper than the plywood, I mean than the hardboard itself. The other important thing about a push stick like this is that this side right here, this, the part that pushes down here, has to be absolutely straight. So I didn't freehand this on the bandsaw. I set up a fence on the bandsaw and make this cut, pulled it out, and then made this cross cut here. Pretty simple. So here we go. Let's uh, cut one of these strips and see how well it fits in here. Okay, here's the cut strip. Let's see what happens when we put it in the miter slot. I mean, it'd be a miracle if this thing fit just right the first time. So I usually take two or three tries to get a, slit, a, a piece like this that fits perfectly. And that's why using hardboard stock is real nice. You just keep cutting pieces off of it until you get it right. Don't worry about the waste. So sticking this in here, does it wiggle a bit? Oh, back and forth a little bit, but that's not bad. Really, you want 
not so tight a fit that you have to force it through here, but you certainly don't want this thing to wobble any, any which way. No, I think we're good to go. So the next step, we're going to set up the plywood table for gluing this strip onto it, okay? Here's the uh, blank piece of plywood for the jig. I've cut it so that it is one inch longer from here to here than the depth of the table. And I've cut it also so that it's about, when I'm done, it'll overhang the table about three inches this way. I need that overhang in order to provide room for having the clamp for the sliding bar that holds the pivot point. And I needed that extra three inches also to get past this pin, which aligns the tabletops. So um, you could probably just glue this runner right onto the uh, plywood base, just as it is with ruler measurements, some clamps, no big deal. But what I'm going to do instead is to actually clamp it on in place so that I know everything will line up. So first thing we're going to do then is to cut the slot in the plywood. So what I've done is to clamp a stop block to the front of the table. So that'll prevent the base from moving any farther forward. And uh, I clamp this thin piece of wood, three inches wide, to the edge of my base. And that will serve as a kind of a fence to guide me when I make this cut. And I also notice when I do this that uh, this alignment pin is going to get in the way. So let me pull that out. And we're going to just turn on the saw and make the cut. Okay, so this is where the base is going to end up without this thing on, of course. So, but right now what I'm going to do is just pull this out, set this aside here, and then I'm going to place our runner in the slot here and uh, put some glue on it, put the base on top of it, and weight it down, and uh, have a coffee break. But uh, let me show you how this is going to work, because we got to get this thing at the right height. Obviously, it sits down inside the slot, so that isn't going to work. So let me go over and grab some little short cutoffs. Same material. If I put those in the slot here, and here, and put my actual runner on top of that, you see that it sits proud of the cast iron table, the bandsaw, which is just perfect. So now, I really can't just place this right on top of here because it'll be a little tippy. So instead, what I've got to do is to say goodbye. Come right back. I forgot my playing cards. Shims I use for all kinds of things. But anyway, um, three cards is about the same height as the amount that this thing sticks up above the table. So if I put this over here, three on that side and three on that side. Am I lucky today? No, I guess not. Um, and that over there. Then I'm going to just dribble some glue on here, slide this thing in here, weight it down. I'll be good to go. Glue time. So I'm just going to put a pretty narrow strip of glue down here. I don't want to have it uh, squeeze out all over my bandsaw table because it tends to rust it. So you don't need a whole lot. Let's just see what happens and hope for the best though. Okay. There we go. Ooh, that's a little too much up at the front. I think I have to use my uh, built-in glue spreader here and fix it a little bit. All right, that should do it. Okay, stick the table in. We got to kind of negotiate this so it doesn't slide on the runner all the way up to this front stop, straight down. Everything looks in place. The fence is 
tight on the side here. Now I just got to put a little bit of weight right above that miter slot. But, uh, oh, here, how about some cans? That'll work. You really can't get a clamp in there. Don't need one either. So there, we're all set. Take a break. Oh, man, look, hey, I'm back, because I forgot one thing. I can do it right now, too, before uh, the glue dries, and that is to add the stops underneath this edge of the base. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the stop. Hold it underneath there, and uh, you really can't see what's going on, but I'm just going to put this in here so it's tight up against the bandsaw table, and then take a spring clamp and squash it on there, and the stops will automatically be in the right place. We won't need this block, you know, when you actually use the table anymore. So let's see if I can get this thing in here okay. There's just enough room on this particular saw to get the spring clamp in there and Bingo, there's one. A little bit of glue. Slide it in. Hold it up against the table. Spring clamp. Okay, now it's coffee time. See ya. So here's the runner on the bottom of the base, the two stops, everything lines up just right and travels in there without any kind of wobble. So the next thing we got to do is to cut a dado all the way across here and we're going to want the center of that dado to line up with the front edge of the blade. So we're going to draw a line from the edge here right to the blade. And mark that across here. And then we're going to go over to the table saw where I have a dado blade all set up. And we will, the depth of this dado is pretty critical. It's got to be exactly the same depth as the thickness of your hardboard. So let's make a test cut because this is, again, something you're going to have to fiddle around with because you want to get it just perfect. So let's see what we got here. Take this out. I didn't have to make a long cut. Set my piece of hardboard in here. And um, that feels nice and flush. I kind of skipped over something, though, by the way. Because <laughs> I tell you what, what I would do first is to make this dado cut try it on a narrower piece of hardboard. And then later on after this data was cut is to go back and make this. Because this width, 3 quarters inch nominally, may not be exactly the same width as your miter slot on the bandsaw. So you just use the same runner making technique to cut these pieces to fit here. Anyway, our depth is good. So take the table off of here. And using the center mark for that line, I also made a center mark on my throat plate in the middle of the dado, three quarter inch dado set. And I kind of cheated here because the fence is already, at least I think it is, stuck in the right place. So those center lines should line up just right. So center line for line, center of dado, depth is correct. What more do you have to do? Just turn her on and make the cut. Okay, that's essentially the whole jig right there. Do you remember? It sits in the saw like this. The stick with the pivot pin goes here. By the way, I made the pivot pin stick not out of hardboard, but out of hard maple. And the reason for that was uh, twofold. Well, first of all, 
you have to draw a center line down this thing to line up with the front edge of the blade. And it's really hard to see a little teeny pencil line on a dark piece of hardboard. You know, this stuff. So I said, okay, I'll just make a piece of maple to fit that instead. And secondly, it just works better for drilling little fine holes in it for receiving the, the pivot pins. But anyway, this thing slides right in here, like that. Back and forth. Oh, that one's a little tight. And your zero clearance strip fits on this side. You can just slide this thing in or out to get the distance between the blade and the pivot pin. Clamp it here, and Bob's your uncle, you're off and running. So that's an easy way to make circles. See you next time.